Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Go No Go show for this week. It is Thursday. We're filming this around lunchtime, and uh, what a week it's been. Uh, you'll notice that I'm on my own today. Tyler is traveling. He's going to be in Toronto uh, meeting some clients and, and having some fun, and I'll be doing this one on my own this week. So let's get into it. But before I get into the charts, just to remind everybody that we are doing some presentations next week at the Wealth 365 Summit. So we'd love for everybody to join us, everybody who's available to join us for those. Uh, look out for some information coming via email. Um, and also to check out this show on the Stock Charts app, the On Demand app, and also on the YouTube channel. Uh, give it a like and a subscribe as well as our own channel. So <clears throat> thanks very much for being here. And uh, let's move on and have a look at some of the charts. So what we're going to look at to start, as we typically do, is just our asset class map. And uh, let me just throw in the S&P in the top panel. And what you can see is that we are still in a relatively risk off environment. We're still seeing that the no go trend persists in the S&P 500. That's the top panel here. You can see how we are still in no go bars. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a little bit more depth um, in a few minutes, how the S&Ps rally this week and what that means to the no-go trend. But for right now, we can see that it remains in that no-go trend, albeit painting weaker pink bars. Treasury bond prices continue to remain in a strong no-go, and they've seen a couple of purple bars over the last, last few sessions to uh, see that no-go trend persist. Commodities have seen enough strength to actually paint amber bars of the last uh, the last session here. So that's going to be interesting to see if commodities are finished with their correction or if that will then roll back into another no-go. We'll see what happens there as the week ends. And the dollar still remains in a go trend. Of course, weakening this week, we've seen uh, as the equity markets have rallied strongly, the dollar has fallen off. But we'll be looking at a chart of the dollar in a little bit to see if it can find support. So let's go ahead and look at the S&P charts. Uh, we'll start with the daily chart of the SPY using the ticker of the ETF to represent the market. That just allows us uh, to get a sense of volume and also to, uh, to use a tradable asset. So this is going to be the question on everybody's mind um, as we approach the end of the week. We keep talking about relief rallies in bear markets and how do we know whether this is a relief rally or the start of something more constructive. Uh, if you remember, we've talked about this period here at length and we talked about how this really felt like a strong surge in equities, but really didn't get out of the no-go trend, uh, stayed in pink bars before rolling over into the no-go stronger form again. Um, later on in the chart here, we can see that we had that, that rally that pushed the go-no-go -go trend indicator into painting amber bars. Remember, amber go fish bars. Um, and so that means that it wasn't able to generate enough momentum to give us go bars, but did show a little bit of uncertainty here in these amber bars before rolling over once more, <clears throat> excuse me, to paint strong no-go bars. Well, here we are again with price moving higher this week, the no-go trend weakening to pink bars. So the question becomes, how do we know whether or not this is another relief rally, in which case we should be uh, preparing ourselves for a move lower, or if this should is a, a strong enough move to push us into a go trend and so take action accordingly there? Well, um, we, uh, of course, like to take as much subjectivity out of the analysis as we can. Um, and that's why we're using the go no go charts. And so the weight of the evidence tells us that we are still in a no go trend, even though those bars have weakened. Now, remember, if you're new to go no go charts, we've got aqua and blue are the go colors, meaning that we're in a strong positive trend. When we're seeing bright blue, uh, the weaker form is aqua. When we're seeing a bearish trend, a no-go trend, then the colors are pink for the weaker form and purple for the stronger form. And in between, often in a transition, we see amber bars, and we call those the go-fish bars as a reference 
to Jesse Livermore, the famous Jesse Livermore quote about fishing. So here we are again, weaker pink bars after a series of lower highs and lower lows. So this is what you can say at this point that we are just setting a, a new lower high. So you can see how we've stepped down with lower lows and lower highs and all else being equal until this is proved to be something different it is a lower high so of course if we had a couple of bars that moved in this direction then you could start to challenge that assertion because if we can get past the high here we can get past this support but until this isn't then it is a lower high and interestingly today we're down just over half a percent or around about a half a percent if we close lower today than yesterday was the highest uh, highest high and the highest close relative to today and so we are still looking at this most likely as a higher uh, a new high but a lower high as we move through this no-go trend all right so if that sounded confusing i might have made a hash of explaining it but when we're looking at a downtrend, we're looking for lower lows and lower highs. And if this becomes a lower high, then we are just in a new stage of the downtrend. Now, having said that, how would we know, how would we get an indication that perhaps this isn't going to be a lower high, but a move in the new direction? Well, to that, we will turn to our oscillator. So if go no go oscillator blends momentum inputs together, um, to give us all of the valuable information that we want out of our momentum inputs, but keeps it in one panel. And the way it's calculated gives us an objective level of support and resistance that can be used when in trend. So look up some of our videos, some of our webinars where we've discussed that concept in great detail. But the, the gist of it is that if a trend is in place, this zero level can be used as resistance in a downtrend or support in an uptrend. So for example, we go into a no-go trend here. We are below zero in the oscillator, meaning that the momentum is negative, which is in line with the no-go trend. As momentum moves into neutral territory and rallies to test the zero line, it should, all else being equal, get rejected if this no-go trend is to continue. And that is what happens. So right now we are at a critical moment with regard to whether or not this turns out to be a lower high or and therefore just another relief rally or if it becomes something more significant and so what we'll be looking at is whether or not the zero line rejects the oscillator and the oscillator stays in negative territory and if it does that we will get a red circle a no-go trend continuation icon painted above price, which will tell us that we will likely see price move lower and test these lows. No-go trend would, in that case, still be in place. If the oscillator breaks above the zero line, then we are going to give a bit more credence or a bit more weight to this relief rally and expect that perhaps price may surge a little bit higher. And you can see that that was the case here, a zero line, which we thought uh, or expected to be resistance if this no-go trend was to continue, wasn't resistance, um, was broken, and then we see a significant move in the other direction, which of course became a short-lived go trend. So that's what we're looking at here. Will this become a new leg down in price? Will the oscillator get rejected and stay below zero? If so, no-go still in place, and this would look like then a new lower high. So. What about on a longer time frame chart? Let's take a look at the weekly chart and see where we are here. Well, we noted at the end of last week that we had crashed back below the zero line um, on heavy volume and that the no-go uh, trend was still in place on the weekly chart. And that is still the case. This week's have been a very strong week, of course, but we are still in strong purple no-go bars and the oscillator is still below the zero line in negative territory. So if we were to add this to our analysis of the daily chart, you might expect the daily chart to resolve to the downside and see this is as um, another move lower if we get rejected here, because that lines up with the larger time frame trend that is in place. So 
again, very important and critical moment for uh, the U.S. domestic markets um, as we see what happens as the week uh, finishes this week. Again, if we close lower tomorrow again, then this will really start to look like just a lower high, so a, a relief rally in effect. Right, so moving on from there, we tend to look through the macro drivers that affect the markets, and we'll start with the Treasury yields. Now, remember, Treasury yields are move inversely to Treasury bond prices, and the asset map had Treasury bond prices, and so um, we can see that in the daily time frame, Treasury yields remain in a strong go trend. Um, this move that we saw, very, very strong move, we saw a correction and we were talking about whether or not then we would find support at zero. So that concept that we were just discussing as it related to the S&P now in terms of the Treasury yields, as the price corrected and weakened after this counter trend correction arrow, we turn our eyes to the oscillator to see if it finds support at the zero line. And indeed, it seems to have done just that today bouncing back into positive territory. And that, of course, is what triggers this green circle, which is a go trend continuation icon um, in the go trend of rates. And so we can expect perhaps an attack on this prior high, having held the support here at the zero line. So Treasury yields looking bullish. Um, what that means for the for the US markets, um, we can uh, we don't like to predict, but of course, Treasury is typically a headwind for equities. If we move on from there, let's take a look at the oil markets. Um, on the daily chart, oil has been moving down in a no-go trend, but we are seeing an amber bar on the far right here as the oscillator broke above the zero line. Of course, there was some news about OPEC um, cutting the cutting the supply a little bit. So, um, you know, there's always a reason behind what we see but we try to react to price activity. So we're seeing an amber go fish bar here as price has rallied since this low. And of course, as well, the oscillator breaking above zero into positive territory on heavy volume. So there's a few things there lining up to give us the idea that things perhaps are changing from a trend perspective. And what about the dollar? Well, the dollar, of course, <clears throat> has been the one that has puzzled so many for so long. Um, many, many people, many well-known and respected analysts calling for the dollar to roll over several times throughout the year hasn't happened yet. Um, we are looking at this current correction, especially this massive uh, drop that, that sort of coincided with the, the strong day in, in equities. Um, but what did it do really? Well, it just gave us a correction against the go trend, which we saw after this counter trend correction arrow, we see a weakening go trend, but we can see that the weight of the evidence didn't combine to allow the go no go trend indicator to paint anything other than an aqua go bar, even on this low here, which as if you can uh, imagine is at a sort of an area of support here. So we fell right down to it, but we stayed in the go trend. And what has that done to our oscillator? It's caused the oscillator to fall to the zero line. And we see the oscillator now riding the zero line as the grid of the go no go squeeze climbs, uh, suggesting that there is no directional momentum at the moment, but the go trend in place and oscillator riding the zero line looking for support. So the same principles can be uh, applied here in that if we are going to see support at zero, then we will see a continuation icon as we did here, uh, suggesting that momentum is coming back in the direction of the go trend. So if we break out of this squeeze into positive territory, we've got positive momentum in a go trend. Um, so then we can perhaps expect price to try to run higher. Um, and that is uh, then of course also going to be perhaps a bit of a headwind for equities. So let's move on from the macro drivers to take a look at the, uh, the sectors underneath the equity markets to see how uh, they're looking in terms of go, no go trends on relative strength. So remember, this chart takes the go, no go trend concept and applies it not just to the pure price action of each sector, but to the relative ratio of the sector to the base index and then paints the panel based on the colors 
of the the uh, the go no go trend. Um, and what that does is that allows us to get a really nice sense of allocation uh, of leadership and allows us to look at rotation to see wh what is driving the market. Um, and one thing that jumps off here, uh, we've been talking about this chart now for a couple of weeks and saying that, hey, not too much has changed. And we've been talking about the discretionary sector as how it has surprisingly held out in a relative go trend um, during this heavy correction of the S&P. And in, uh, in contrast to that, technology and communications have been in no-go trends now for some time, driving that index lower. And the other growth sector, discretionary, uh, seemed to be able to hang on to its relative outperformance. Well, that has changed this week. We can see that discretionary, the second panel here, has also entered a relative no-go trend to the S&P. So now you've got the three growth sectors, technology, discretionary, and communications, combining in strong no-go trends to uh, continue to move the index lower. Um, very defensive picture that you're seeing now as more and more sectors enter no-go trends on a relative basis. The only holdouts now are energy, financials, and you saw that chart of oil moving higher to paint an amber bar just a minute ago. So energy, financials, and healthcare, the only ones now in relative outperformance. Um, so the picture getting a little darker, even in the face of the rally this week. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, as we move, we move forward from here. Um, and then, so out of this, to pick a, uh, going to do it a little bit differently this week. We'll we'll look at a couple of the single stocks um, that were in our note that went out this week, and then I'll just fire through a couple of the other charts that I've been looking at. Um, so let's go ahead and and turn it back to a single security complete go no go chart where we get that overview of technical analysis in terms of trend, momentum, volume, and volatility, and we'll look at. First, we'll look at Hubble. Now, Hubble is in technology, and it was a very interesting for me to see Hubble performing so well and come across my screens uh, at, with a go trend continuation icon um, w w in this squeeze. Because we know technology, if you think back to that, the rel map, the sector rel map, technology has been underperforming in a relative no go trend for some time. So interesting always to look at strength in the face of weakness, um, perhaps something significant going on with this stock. So this is where we were looking at it um, on Monday. We'd seen it riding the zero line on heavy volume, but being able to continuously find support here um, two or three times. We'd seen several go continuation icons, and then we'd seen a fresh go um, come about after this one amber bar. So we were looking at this uh, at the beginning of the week and saying, okay, we've got a new go emerging in the face of relative underperformance for technology. So perhaps something significant happening here. Um, and then on uh, Monday, in, I think Monday itself here, we broke out of the squeeze into positive territory on heavy volume. And that triggered another go trend continuation icon. So that's three of them here in this clustering or in this area of uh, both supply and demand. We see these three go trend continuation icons, and then finally price is able to uh, burst higher and break above these prior highs. So interesting to see uh, strong blue go bars um, for for Hubble um, this week. Another one that, uh, that I was looking at, in fact, um, just this morning is international seaways. Uh, again, because of the strength we see in the face of a struggling market, Sometimes, uh, you know, that's where it makes sense to look. If something is able to outperform or, you know, have very, very strong price action in a p bad market, then it's clearly there is something that is allowing it to do so. So you can see how we entered a go trend here in July. We saw support at zero. We got a go trend continuation icon as it rallied up to then its uh, new higher high. We saw that counter trend correction arrow, meaning that in the short term, perhaps it was overextended and was going to fail to go too much higher than we did indeed see it go sideways 
and paint some weaker aqua bars. So this is what I'm looking at now today. And this is why it, uh, it went out this morning as a daily idea is that we are now seeing this max go, no, go squeeze in a go trend. Now, of course, this squeeze, all else being equal, we would expect to resolve to the upside. If this go trend is healthy, then zero should provide support. If it does, then we will see another go trend continuation icon under price. And we would expect, we would look for price then to uh, take out these prior highs and set a higher high. Um, but we will be watching and we'll be waiting. And if it breaks below into negative territory, then that's a concern about the health of this go trend and could even potentially lead to uh, some sort of trend reversal. But a very important point, which we'll be watching, if we can break out of this squeeze into positive territory, we will get go trend continuation in the form of a green circle, uh, telling us that we will most likely try to make an attack on that prior high. Um, so that is another one that I was looking at. We'll take a look at uh, at one more just because it's something that I've been following for a long time and I think it's very interesting, and that's Netflix. So if you remember, we've been talking about go, no, go, the no go on Netflix um, all the way back till the end of last year. These big gaps down. Um, people thought that that, you know, that there's no way it could go lower. Big gaps down continue to go lower. And we followed this trend, these continuation icons that were giving us these uh, indications that the trend would continue all the way through until we then saw some really much more constructive price activity uh, when we entered this go trend here. So after an attempt to break above zero, a couple of amber bars falling back to the no go and then that massive go no go squeeze that was broken to the upside, we saw then that allow a go trend to start to be painted. But traditional technical analysis tells us that gaps will provide support or resistance. So we always have this horizontal line here, uh, which we would need to get through, um, you know, to really expect much further gains from this level. Uh, we found resistance. We got rejected by that level. We came up to it again, rejected again. Um, and so we're now hovering around that level. So very interesting chart. What I would like to point out is that we are now back above the zero line. Uh, we moved back above the zero line on heavy volume, and we're now finding support at that zero level again as a max, as a go no go squeeze builds very close to a max go no go squeeze here. So we're going to watch this closely. If we are able to break out of the go no go squeeze into positive territory, and if that gives price the momentum it needs to get above this resistance level, then another traditional concept in technical analysis is that gaps are likely to get filled. So if we can break above the, the level here around 252, then we can expect price to fill the gap up to about 330. So we're looking at these levels with a blend of traditional technical analysis as well as go, no, go charts where we're saying, let's see if we find support here at the zero line uh, to give us an idea of whether or not Netflix will roll over and stay below this level of resistance or if it might break higher and potentially fill that gap. So Netflix, uh, a very interesting one for us to look at as well. Um, and that's it. That's it uh, from me. Uh, next week, Tyler will be back. It'll be the two of us. And I hope everybody is having a uh, good end to the week. We survived these volatile markets and stay with us. And we'll be back next week. And in the meantime, have a great Friday and a great weekend. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.